efforts. Now that we have heat absorbing within a phase and heat absorbing during phase changes, we can talk about a heating curve. There shouldn't be anything that feels completely new in this video. It should feel like putting many pieces together. Before you start this section, watch the videos or try many, as many problems as you need to make sure that you can do the problems that involve finding the heat absorbed or released within a phase and during a phase change. This video is going to combine those two concepts, so not knowing these will lead you to be a bit confused since I'll be moving relatively quickly through those portions and focus, focusing on the process of putting it all together. In this video, we will describe what a heating curve is, identify all of the main portions of a heating curve, and then use the heating curve and all of the previous thermodynamic properties that we have discussed in order to tell the heat absorbed or released when heating or cooling a species through a phase change. Before we start, let's think about what we know about how phases of matter are related. For all of these, we are going to be keeping pressure constant. Then as we heat a solid, it will first warm up. Then when hitting a certain temperature, it will turn into a liquid. As we heat it some more, that liquid will heat up until it reaches the boiling point, at which point it will boil. After this, it will continue to warm as the gas phase absorbs more heat. Each phase change has a different heats as we saw in previous videos, and each of the temperature changes within a phase have a different specific heat. We generally will visualize this in a graph form such as this. So let's talk about this in equation form, and here I'll put up the graph so that we can relate these to the different portions of the graph. We have equations that relate each of these sections. Let's start with from A to B. From A to B, we are heating a solid, and so we use our Q equals MC delta T formula. Then, as the solid melts, we use the heat of fusion multiplied by the moles or the mass depending on whatever units it's given to you in. Then, as we heat the liquid, we are going back to Q equals MC delta T since we are within one phase. This time, we need to make sure to use the specific heat of the liquid. Remember, solids, liquids, and gases all have different specific heats. Once we've reached the boiling point, we use the heat of vaporization multiplied by the moles or the mass depending on the units that it's given in. From there, we're going to heat the gas phase and we're back to Q equals MC delta T. And of course, we can do any section of this as well if, for instance, we are just heating from a liquid to a gas or perhaps cooling from a liquid to a solid. We're going to take an example where we go all the way through from a solid to a gas heating on both sides just so you can see the full example. Let's look at the longest type of example going from a solid all the way to a gas. Here, I ask you to heat methanol at 155 Kelvin up to 375 Kelvin. If I hadn't told you that this was from a solid to a gas, you could see that we start below its melting point and go above its boiling point based on the table values I gave you. We know that when heating within a phase, we need to use Q is equal to MC delta T. Being careful to grab the appropriate appropriate heats. For the phase changes, we're going to multiply the appropriate constant by the number of moles. Here I give you the heats of fusion and vaporization in moles, and so we'll need to multiply by moles. If I'd given it to you by the gram, then you'd multiply by the mass. Let's work through this now. We'll start with the first two parts. We will heat the solid methanol to its boiling point eventually. But for right now, we're just going to be heating the solid up to its melting point. Filling into Q equals MCT will give us the 0.623 moles multiplied by the 105 joules per mole Kelvin multiplied by the delta T. Something that people tend to mistake here is how to calculate the delta T. Remember, this isn't the full change over the entire problem. It's just the change from the solid at the initial temperature to its melting point. 
So we get the 176 minus 155, leaving us with a final answer of 1374. To melt the sample requires moles multiplied by the given heat of fusion, or in this case, the 2200 joules per mole multiplied by the 0.623 moles to give us 1371 joules. Notice that I'm keeping track of sig figs with underlines. Now let's do the next three. For heating the liquid, we'll do the same process as heating the solid, but now fill in the heats for the liquid methanol and the temperature from melting up through the boiling point. You can see this done here, the 0.623 multiplied by the 81.3 joules per mole Kelvin multiplied by just the change in temperature during the liquid phase. This gives us 8,205 joules. Our next step is to boil the methanol. To do that, we need to multiply the heat of vaporization by the moles to give us 21,900. And finally, we heat the gaseous methanol, multiplying the moles by the specific heat of the gaseous methanol, and then the change in temperature only from the boiling point up to the final given temperature. This gives us 1,106 joules. From here, all we have to do is add up all of the pieces. We of course could have done this entire thing as one long equation too, and if you do this a lot, you might get good enough that you, sh you can do that and save some time. I just generally find it easier to teach them if we first separate them all out. So now that we have all of our values and paying attention to the sig figs that we got at each step of the way, we can add these together to get our final value of 34,000 joules. And of course, you could put this in kilojoules as well. Notice, if you go back and look at what I did, I converted everything into joules, even though the table had many of the values in kilojoules. This is something that you're going to see throughout thermodynamics, where much of the constants are calculated in joules and much of the constants are tabulated in kilojoules. If you're going to combine these together at any point in time in the equation, you need to make sure that the units all match. Let's do a quick review. When going through a phase change, you must take each section of the heating curve separately. Within a phase, you'll use the specific heat or Q equals MC delta T if you prefer to just think of the equation. As you are changing a phase, you are going to use the heat of fusion or vaporization of the phase change. And then at the very end, you can add them all up to get the total heat over the course of heating.